We now move into our next session, an expert talk on the topic AI plus cloud, merger for more uh, innovation. This session will focus on how the fusion of AI and cloud will significantly change the technology industry, enhancing business growth, efficiency, and productivity. Our speaker this uh, evening is Tapti Pandupadia, expert practice leader, cloud AI, data, digital, and platform engineering services, third eye advers uh, advisory. Tapti has been an investor and a practice leader in cloud AI adoption for 27 years. She built 200 plus Gartner copyrighted research, including Magic Quadrants, uh, Hype Cycles, and the Gartner IT Score. She received several Gartner Business Awards, having been consistently rated in the top 20 advisors worldwide. It's a pleasure to have uh, you here with us this evening. Tapti, over to you. So thank you, Justin, for the kind introduction. And uh, welcome, audience, uh, to the NASCOM Cloud Summit uh, 2022. And uh, here is something very interesting that we are going to discuss today uh, in terms of the God equation between cloud and AI that's enabling uh, millions of organizations to platformize their businesses. So when we look at the state of cloud, the baseline infrastructure for any digital enterprise, any digital organization uh, is essentially cloud, right? So. Uh, we see that uh, you know different organizations and different sectors uh, use uh, cloud-based infrastructure and cloud-based technology stacks. Uh, uh, infrastructure then essentially network, storage, data, algorithms, different kinds of algorithms and applications, uh, be it artificial intelligence, be it IoT, be it uh, robotic process automation, different kinds of technology stacks uh, sitting on top of uh, the uh, compute uh, storage infra layers and network and database layers. So ultimately uh, the kind of experiences that are delivered from these entire end-to-end -end cloud based uh, technology stacks uh, are uh, varied by the sectors, by the regions, by the kind of user bases that different organizations scatter to so essentially, uh, these are the uh, typical uh, strategic objectives. Uh, so whenever we uh, you know, speak with an end user organization about evaluating their cloud uh, strategy and cloud progression, how mature their cloud strategy and cloud execution uh, practices are, we start with the objectives, right? And these are the typical objectives that we uh, have been hearing and uh, that's where, in fact, we did a survey with some 2,000 uh, um, IT and uh, business leaders, enterprise leaders, uh, CXO levels and VP levels, uh, director level people. Um, and uh, we, we received uh, this kind of a uh, spread uh, of their strategic ob objectives or expectations from cloud. And uh, as we all uh, can very clearly um, uh, kind of relate to, that cloud has actually over the last few years, especially more so during the pandemic years, cloud has uh, kind of moved on uh, from two things to two things, right? So first it has moved on from an option to a necessity, right? So what used to be like a good to have kind of an infrastructure, from a cost saving standpoint and agility standpoint actually became a must have infrastructure, uh, you know, due to the hybrid work environment, remote infrastructure requirements of uh, millions of uh, workforce across businesses. So uh, that's the first thing that has changed and what that change essentially made cloud uh, to become is uh, it made cloud to move from being an operational lever to, uh, to a strategic lever, right? So uh, the uh, more advanced organizations like the services organizations, financial services, BFSI, retail, uh, some of the manufacturing aspects are associated with uh, say supply chains and operations, those things actually have kind of uh, leveraged cloud more and more for strategic uh, objectives, not so much just for improving operational efficiency or improving the IT infrastructure uh, process efficiencies and so on and so forth. So this is what in fact the survey revealed 
that the biggest uh, chunk of people, in fact, are looking at using cloud uh, as uh, as one of their top three uh, levers to uh, move into the uh, digital transformation programs. Anything transformational, we know that they are strategic in nature. Uh, they are long term. They are expensive, but the impact is kind of non-linear and uh, absolutely uh, mind-blowing in some instances. We will discuss about a lot of uh, user uh, end-user stories that towards the end across different uh, segments where we will talk about this. But uh, the, the key shifts are two, essentially one cloud moving from a good to have to a must have technology stack and uh, two, cloud moving from an operational enabler to a strategic value creator and not just a value enabler. So that's the first leverage parameter that uh, emerges across as the biggest one. Then the second one, as you can see in the, in the uh, graphics itself, is that uh, the, uh, the second most important objective has been to improve efficiency elasticity, agility, and resilience of uh, the technology infrastructure of organizations. So this is, uh, you know, essentially enabled by the nature of cloud itself, uh, where we are not just talking about private cloud or public cloud or a hybrid of the two. We are also talking about different kinds of cloud platforms for different kinds of technologies. So uh, say there are organizations that are adopting multi-cloud and uh, I sometimes call it multimodal cloud, right? For different kinds of workloads that require different kinds of speed and efficiency and elasticity, different kinds of cloud and different uh, cloud uh, technology platforms are being utilized. So more data heavy, for instance, more analytics heavy, more algorithms heavy, more AI heavy kind of workloads are uh, typically finding their rightful, rightful places in uh, Google Cloud, for instance. When you look at uh, the, uh, the, uh, the end user focused, the experience heavy kind of uh, uh, applications, uh, they are moving more towards the Microsoft Azure cloud. And uh, when it comes to the 70% of the data center workloads, which are ballpark, you know, heavy lifting, compute storage, uh, those kind of uh, uh, infrastructure, uh, be it uh, the physical infrastructure or the, the data infrastructure, they are typically finding their rightful place in Amazon Cloud, AWS Cloud. So uh, different kinds of workloads, depending on their speed requirement, depending on their uh, elasticity requirements are finding place in multiple different uh, uh, platforms. So it's no longer just a pure Microsoft shop or an AWS shop or a, a Google shop. Essentially, we are looking at mix and matches of uh, different cloud platforms, their strengths, their, uh, you know, uh, the kind of ideal workload optimized in, in those platforms. So efficiency and agility and resilience, these are all coming as a given uh, from all these cloud platforms. So we are talking about private, uh, public, hybrid cloud, multiple cloud platforms in multiple modes. Hence, multimodal cloud means we have uh, cloud workloads uh, requiring different speeds, and that is where uh, different types of cloud technology stacks are being invoked. And of course, all these things can scale on demand. That's the fundamentally uh, you know, uh, value-changing kind of a prospect of uh, any cloud application. So that gives us to the, uh, the to-do list, so to say, right? So uh, what we are seeing that uh, most of the uh, large end-user organizations, mid to large end-user organizations are doing uh, in terms of using cloud. So the observations that we find is that number one, uh, cloud is relevant for any size of organization. So we saw that you know 40% of uh, mid to large size organizations ranked uh, cloud technology migration being integral to digital transformation. So it's not that you know cloud is only meant for huge organizations, global organizations, distributed organizations uh, that are at scale. Even for small organizations that are looking at very fast growth, uh, they they will require cloud to scale, right? So. Uh, suppose they, they, they need to move 
from thousand uh, transactions a day to maybe a million transactions a day kind of a growth, business growth that they are targeting. So they can't do it by, uh, you know, buying data center uh, equipments, right? So they have to uh, invest in cloud. Second thing that we see is that the cost versus performance equations are um, again emerging as a key parameter for cloud technologies that uh, you know nearly a third of the CIOs in fact uh, that we surveyed uh, they had cost versus performance optimization as uh, their uh, among their top three strategic objectives from cloud so it's not just you know replacing technology uh, you know uh, from on prem to cloud that kind of lift and shift kind of model but at the same time it is also uh, you know, kind of uh, pushing the end user CIOs and their teams to uh, refactor their workload so that uh, the critical workloads that require high performance are at the uh, most efficient uh, uh, cloud technology uh, platforms or technology stacks uh, and the cost of running versus the performance required uh, is what is being optimized, not just cost. Right, so that's the uh, good part about uh, the end-to-end the -end view that the CIOs have uh, in terms of the value that they're getting from cloud. And third, and the most important thing, this is what we will actually kind of zoom in on, uh, is cloud ver verticalization, right? So uh, we, we have published, in fact, from third eye, uh, a number of documents on uh, how cloud has moved and very interesting observations. Uh, I have been covering this space for uh, a dozen plus years now, starting with our Gartner days, uh, 2010 onwards. And um, cloud essentially started from uh, just the physical infrastructure options, right? I remember, you know, working in uh, IIT Delhi uh, back in 1998, 99, uh, before we were, uh, I mean, when I was working on my PhD, then we actually had something called grid computing where we used to work on Unix clusters uh, spanning across the uh, you know, two IITs in India to four uh, US universities. And uh, that grid was technically the father of cloud uh, in terms of uh, multiple remote Unix clusters were sharing their compute and uh, compute capacity together. Uh, and then, in fact, uh, that cluster computing, that technology architecture moved into cloud when Amazon essentially uh, kind of made the operational, uh, you know, business financial version of it. Uh, so that was the first stage when cloud 1.0, if I can call it so, uh, emerged, right? So you have, uh, you don't have to invest in a physical server if you are looking for compute, you can hire compute, right? So you can rent a virtual machine on cloud. So that was the 1.0 cloud. And then the 2.0 cloud has happened, uh, you know, already uh, quite well in terms of uh, the finance teams using cloud, functional cloud, right? The 2.0 cloud. So finance teams using cloud, HR using cloud, uh, cloud-based technology across uh, the stacks for their uh, specific kind of functional workloads. And now we are increasingly seeing cloud ver verticalization and we are seeing that uh, emerging, that demand is emerging from the end users and that has driven the cloud technology providers as well as the uh, service provider uh, ecosystem to move towards industry clouds, right? So industry clouds as in, uh, you know, banking cloud, for instance, right? Or manufacturing cloud, industry 4.0 cloud, healthcare cloud, health lake, for instance, AWS has uh, launched uh, last year. So uh, those kind of clouds are specialized. They have pre-trained models. They have pattern bases. They have knowledge bases that can actually help, uh, you know, companies in specific sectors to get the best practices of cloud in a kind of uh, cloud in a box. Sounds very oxymoronic, but it's a cloud in a box kind of a model uh, that is uh, you know almost like in a plug and play mode that uh, a small bank for instance they want to start uh, the operational banking operations uh, uh, in in a cloud mode in a saas mode saas pass iaas mode they can actually do that so 
that kind of uh, you know bundling of technology stacks are uh, increasingly becoming visible so essentially uh, what it means is that uh, for for cios and it leaders the priority it leaders or even business leaders um, the priority essentially has moved towards building and refactoring cloud strategy as part of your transformation program not just piecemeal uh, you know cloud applications here and there but uh, the whole thing needs to run under a certain set of policies uh, the organizational cloud strategy needs to be in place and uh, accordingly the cloud roadmap needs to be refactored readjusted in line with your business strategy uh, and business transformation programs the second requirement essentially is in terms of not looking at cloud for just lift and shift infrastructure uh, replacement but also in terms of the cost versus versus performance gains the value that you target to realize especially for the critical uh, business workloads and third essentially is that uh, uh, you know the virtual verticalization that has happened in the cloud uh, bundling uh, technology stack bundling uh, space and here in fact we see that bfsi as a sector uh, they have experimented early. We will share some very unique examples from that space. And they have actually uh, been leading the way in terms of how to uh, build, first of all, and then leverage industry clouds. So uh, this uh, is uh, you know, my favorite part. So essentially, what we talk about is uh, how AI is actually predicting the future of cloud. So I'm uh, the good part, uh, you know, being a, a practitioner uh not beyond just uh, being an analyst is that i actually work on ai uh, uh first hand in terms of uh, trying out hugging face uh, and uh, gpt uh, my specialization is in uh, large language models and language ai so to say so essentially what i did is uh, all these uh, uh, survey data that we got so first we 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 built our own analyst narratives on each one of them that what uh, the survey tells us and, uh, you know, how we um, kind of extrapolate from that. And then, in fact, what I did is I um, kind of uh, mapped this onto the uh, the GPT-2 uh, and 3 uh, APIs to see what they are predicting. And uh, this is what uh, they, they came up with. Uh, the GPT solutions actually came up with some very interesting triaging model that the first thing they talk about is you look at the industry and business specific cloud uh, requirements uh, when uh, you are uh, an end user CIO, for instance, and you are uh, trying to uh, create or enhance your cloud strategy. Look at peer references, what others have gained from cloud in terms of speed, accuracy, efficacy. Then the second lever that you need to look at is the regional GRC requirements, data privacy requirements cyber security requirements, physical hosting site visibility, the controls that you get, the FinOps kind of the cost controls and performance controls that you get and the compliance records, uh, th those things also you get from industry references. Uh, referenceability is extremely important as uh, you know, is coming out from uh, the GPT predictions as well. And the third one is essentially look at the technology roadmap from the hyperscalers in terms of what's coming, because these uh, you know stacks are going to stay with you for three, two, three, five, seven years, right? So these are strategic technology stacks. So you the cost of uh, you know uh, switching off is tremendous. It's unthinkably high. It it can almost make one lose their business. So essentially, uh, look at the technology map uh, in terms of the sustainability of the technology and the elasticity of the technology into the future. So uh, these are the best practices that uh, essentially have emerged. Uh, so we talk about uh, direct peer references, uh, check availability of industry standardized use cases. So uh, you will see that a lot of IT service providers, they showcase to us as well. Uh, you know, the cloud accelerators, the pre-trained models, uh, you know, the consulting journey maps that they have created. And, uh, you know, more than the quantity or the number of IPs that they showcase, uh, it is important to sh see or to check with them and to their peer references that uh, what impact has it created uh, in the organizations that 
have already got those IPs in use, right? So um, you look at Accenture's and IBM's of the world, they have created 9,000, 11,000 uh, IPs, patents uh, on these kind of technology stacks over uh, every year uh, almost, right? So, but wh wh what benefits are the end user clients getting out of these IPs in production is what we need to check and essentially uh, you know, uh, take inputs uh, in a long-term uh, perspective, also factor in the GRC requirements. So uh, this is again the, uh, the second part of it, the infrastructure sites where they are lying for regional uh, cloud situations that you need to see. And uh, this is the third one that I couldn't emphasize more is that you have to look at the uh, cloud investments from a three year, five year, seven year horizon and uh, the quality and the durability of the IPs and differentiators are key to your decisions. So this is where in fact we spoke about the uh, you know, BFS uh, uh, going forward with cloud for strategic transformations beyond just cost gains. And these are all the examples that we spoke about, Capital One, uh, is an is an completely like early mover example. They had center of excellence, a COE on explainability, explainable AI on uh, their loan processing use cases and KYC use cases way back from 2016. CT has used um, you know AI for uh, from cloud on their uh, you know private cloud IT operations for several years now. Amex has been using it for fraud detection. Visa and MasterCard use it for very interesting things like uh, um, you know, stopping declines, uh, false declines. And in fact, MasterCard in fact used AI for stopping false declines. It saved them uh, some 18 plus billions of dollars uh, in terms of lost revenues. Similarly, you see if you drill down on industry cloud and uh, CPG or retail, you see very different set of use cases, but extremely interesting use cases. PepsiCo, for instance, uses AI on cloud for uh, identifying new flavors in their uh, chips uh, products. Coca-Cola uses it for smart vending machines. Walmart uses it everywhere, intelligent shelves, intelligent supply chain. Unilever uses it again from everywhere between uh, you know, uh, HR recruitment to uh, managing the supply chain. So these are in fact uh, the summary of the examples that we spoke about and more stories to share. And uh, we will be more than happy to in fact elaborate on any of them uh, if you feel uh, the need for going through their stories and how they have platformized their businesses on the, the cloud technology stacks. Thank you very much and over to you, Justin. Thank you, Tapti, for an interesting and insightful presentation.